Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So today we're going to take a look at the Gochi Fix Oscilloscope Multimeter Waveform Generator 3-in-1. And this is multimeter waveform. It has a screen and it's auto-ranging. Now, full disclosure, this was sent to me by our friends at Banggood for review on this channel and Gochi Fix, obviously. So let's take a quick look at this, and uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time unboxing, but I haven't even had this open yet. So inside, of course, we have the device itself. We have a set of cables that looks like our charging cable, and that's USB-A to USB-C. We have a BNC to alligator clip cable. We have standard multimeter probes, and we have an oscilloscope probe that looks like it is, well, we'll look at it closer. And it has a set of color bands and an adjustment so we can tweak it in. So that is what comes in the box with the Gochi Fix. Let's move that out of the way for now and take a look at the Gochi Fix O-scope itself. And it's in this vinyl case. It's kind of nice to keep the dust and dirt off of it. And sealed in a plastic bag from the factory. So this is the Gochi Fix, and this is going to be USB-C rechargeable. And there's our charging port, and it is USB-C, as you can see. And it's in one of those little rubberized cases with the flap over it. And we can see here uh, our basic functions on the front. So 10 amp total current input, max 10 amp. And it says that clearly on here with the danger warning. Milliamps, we can measure up to 500 milliamps through the milliamp side of the current test. There's our common, and then here is our volts, ohms, and capacitance connection here. And this is CAT2 rated for 1,000 volts. There is a manual in the box. We'll take a look at that in a minute as well. But let's turn this on and see what the screen looks like. The giant red and white power button on front. And hopefully this will show up on camera fairly well. And there we go. So that is a good looking screen and I'm looking at it on the monitor. So we're in multimeter mode here and you can see we have soft buttons down here. DC voltage, AC voltage, frequency in Hertz and our duty cycle. These buttons down here also do similar functions that changes to resistance. And you can see that there from the little diagram. It also will kick us to its current. That's our waveform generator. So this changes us where we can cycle through the top set of buttons. So resistance, diode check, and I assume continuity. Nope, there's continuity separate. And then there is our capacitance check. So all the functions right there. If we go back to this, that changes us to the multimeter where we can measure AC, DC, frequency, and duty cycle. This takes us to the component measurements. Then this takes us to current, DC milliamps, AC milliamps, DC amps, AC amps. And then of course back to our arbitrary waveform generator. And then from there we have different functions with the soft keys F1 through F4. So pretty straightforward. We look at the utility menu, we can change the beep on or off, a backlight, and power it off. You use the four-way D-pad here to, we'll turn off the beep because I hate beepy things. We can set the backlight, different levels. I can't tell a whole lot of difference there. It looks great to me either way. Oh, there we go. That's the low level of backlight. And if we change that back up to five and then arrow back, and then, of course, that will do power off. So we'll get out of, that's the utility menu. Then this would be for the oscilloscope, our channels. Channel 1, channel 2, we'll test that out in a minute. And then our trigger level for the oscilloscope. Okay, here is uh, some of our instructions. This is a, we have two things. We have a manual here, which we'll flip through quickly in a second. But we have this simple operation instruction. So this goes through the oscilloscope buttons and the functions they do and how to set them. 
tells you exactly which keys to press, which way to go for our time base, our horizontal measurement, as well as our vertical measurements, our trigger setup, uh, cursor readout, and how to set those. And then on the other side, we have simple operation for the multimeter function, as well as our signal function, and then how to replace the fuse in this. So that is kind of handy as a reference to have in front of you. This is the actual user's manual for the scope. I really wish they would print these things in bigger words. Safety instructions. So here is what I was looking for. Here is our specs on this guy. So this is 200, and there's no way you can read this. This is 200 mega samples per second sampling, an 80 megahertz bandwidth total, and a 6,000 count auto ranging true RMS digital multimeter. So that is our, our basic functions. The waveform function can store 2,000 sets of data in 200 separate waveforms. It has self-setting parameters. This is the auto button I mentioned that's common in all current oscilloscopes, where it'll figure out the best time base and vertical voltage measurements for doing any measurements, and uh, try and figure out what it's looking at. Then it goes through the functions, which we've already talked about, overload protection. It has a 15 minute no use timeout, so it'll shut itself off to save the battery. And we get into specific key functions again, and what those are, and then more detailed information on the oscilloscope operation how to set your probe, how to calibrate your probes. And I've talked about this in several previous videos. And we'll, uh, we'll do a probe calibration maybe. And then um, how to set amplitude and trigger operation. All this is scope functionality. And save your waveforms. And then we get into meter functionality here. And how to get into it. You can set manual or automatic ranging. Measurement data hold, DC and AC voltage measurements, current measurements, resistance measurements, diode and continuity, capacitance. We can store our data. If we take a look at some of the things we have with this meter, I mentioned we have this. So we have uh, a BNC to alligator clip lead set. We have our charging cable, of course. And we have our scope probes and our meter probes. So let's take a look at the meter probes. These seem pretty stout. They say they are rated, I think it should be on here, CAT2, or I think. Right, so that goes in here. That one we'll put in the common for now. Turn that guy on. And let's change over to our mode and go to continuity. Oops, mode. I'll get there. Continuity. I have to get some components out to test here in a second. And it gives us a nice loud beep. I don't see anything lighting up specifically. But that's common. Nobody does that. Almost everybody. Probes are touching. Almost everybody does it with just a beep these days. Okay, so let me get the scope probes out. We'll go through a quick calibration of them and see if we can find something interesting to take a look at on the oscope functionality. All right, let's do a quick test of the oscilloscope and the wave generator. So I have our waveform generator set to, again, a one kilohertz signal at three volts peak to peak, and we're outputting a sine wave. And let's take a look. And as you can see, that does it beautifully and we should be able to adjust our time base here yep right and left makes perfect sense and then we're showing 100 millivolts on our vertical scale and i can change that here as you can see and change the size of the scale so that's working fine let's go over and change our frequency on our Output signal, and let's change this up to, I don't know how high this goes off the top of my head, but let's try 25 megahertz. And I'll go back to our oscilloscope, and let's do auto instead of manually rearranging it. And there's our signal. So 
this costs about $150, $160. This is a good scope for the price. I am surprised that the signal generator goes up to 25 megahertz. That's pretty awesome. But you can see here that it's uh, it's kind of a little sketchy on the sine wave. Let's let's bump our yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's it capped at five megahertz on the signal generator. Let me try that again. I told it 25, which was somewhat surprising. 25. Yeah, it's it's stopping it at five megahertz. So the sig generator is maxed out at five megahertz. That's fine. I would have been surprised at 25. Very surprised at 25. So let's go with a one megahertz signal. One megahertz. Go back to our scope. And let's do auto to reset our scales. And that looks really good. Nice and solid. So the waveform generator works. Let's change our waveform type. We're on a sine wave. Let's change to a square wave. Jump back. And as you can see, it's not a pure square wave. It's a little sketchy looking. That's probably a function of the frequency output of the waveform generator. And keep in mind that we're doing all of this on the same device. All right, let's go and change our type to a ramp. And that looks about exactly like I'd expect. Ramp, sine, and square, the only three waveforms it puts out. Change our peak-to-peak -peak voltage. So let's go to one volt peak-to-peak. -peak. Back to our scope. That should have changed our output size, and it did. We can hit auto again. And it adjusts the scale to give us a, a better display, a more pleasing reading. And auto is a function on every scope I've ever seen. Even old scopes have an auto function generally. So I'd say the oscilloscope part works great. All right, let's do a little testing. So I've got this guy set in diode mode now. And I grabbed an LED out of the parts bin. I have no idea which way this is hooked up, but let's find out. If I got it forward, it's going to light up, and it does. As you can see, if I can get my big fat thumb out of the way. Yep, there we go. Forward volt, forward biased at 1.8 volts. And if we flip it over, we should get nothing. And we don't. So the diode function works great. We're going to hit our function button again and change over to resistance mode and we're using uh, our resistance substitution box we've got i did a video on this a long time ago and we're set on the ohms range and we are at 10 which i think is apparently not working right because that said 37. there may or may not have been some sort of electrical malfeasance with that uh with that resistor setting in a previous video. So 2022, 20, and we're reading 21.9, 47 is dead on, 100, all good. As you can see, this is auto ranging. 330 is what this says, 325 is what we're reading. 470, let's jump over to the K ohm reading. And there's 22K, there's 33K. Excellent. So that's working great. Next, let's test capacitance. All right, we're on our capacitance range, and we're on picofarads, and that's the 100 pico. There's 220. Or excuse me, 150. 0.1 nanos, or 100, or 220 is our range now. And this is not an expensive box, so I would trust that the meter is probably more accurate to what these values are at the time. 470, it's reading fairly low. Let's change over to the microfarad range. There is 0 0.01 microfarads or 9.622 nanofarads. I wish the scale would change where I could set the scale. Because otherwise you have to kind of convert nanofarads to microfarads in your head. We're at 0 0.15, which is 15 nanofarads. So that's doing the thing. Perfect. 
All right, let's do a quick AC volt or DC voltage check rather. So I have a small desktop power supply over here and I'm gonna try and it's an adjustable one once I get the probes in there. And we are at two volts on the meter I'm looking at. There's an analog meter on this power supply. And as we crank up our voltage, there's five volts indicated over here and the meter is reading 5.2, 715, eight, there should be 10 right at it. And you see it's DC, we don't have any duty cycle on it. It's straight DC voltage. So now let's take a look at AC voltage. So there's our vo AC voltage, 120. And if we look at our frequency, you'll see we're at 60 cycles, 60 hertz for North American AC power. All right, so I gotta say I like this. Uh, combined to be a meter and component test and oscilloscope, this is a great device. This is available on Amazon. I will have affiliate links in the description below. Doesn't cost you any extra, so it helps out the channel. Again, this was provided to me by Banggood and Gochi Fix, free of charge for a video review. They don't get to see the video before you do. They have no editorial input into the video. Guys, I like the meter. I think it's a great buy. This is currently running about $170, I think, on Amazon. I'd have to go check. It's not bad, 80 megahertz. It's got a built-in function generator. It has two channels. We only used one channel. You would have to buy a separate probe if you want to use two channels at one time. That's fine. You can buy probes all day on Amazon. With the set of cables you get, the alligator clip to BNC, the meter cables, and the oscilloscope probe, plus the adjustment screwdriver to, to calibrate your probe and spare ID rings and tips for everything, I think this is a great buy for the price. Guys, that's all I've got in this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring the bell so whenever I post any new videos, you get notified. Thanks, y'all. 73.